two of the truck tour. Right now, I'm going to take you outside. Obviously, not in the location where I'm filming today. This is just a wee film or some segments. But uh, I'm going to take you outside. And we're going to have a walk around the vehicle, check underneath the bonnet, check out the storage lockers, you know, as you do, and do a summary. So, hopefully, you enjoy this. See you in a second. We're now outside. First of all, I'm going to show you off from the front. So I'll spin it around. And sorry about the wind, hopefully you can hear me okay. As I say, we've got the sun visor front on this, which is nice, and the two upper spots. And we've got the mid spots as well, which are awesome. And all, of, all the lights in this truck are just awesome. It's like at night time, you bring daytime, if it makes any sense. And on the front, if I remember, Yep, on this one, we've got a pull down step, which is always useful. And I pre opened all this, I've actually kind of semi fought ahead. And check a coolant, which is okay. Might have to look at topping it, keep a closer eye on that. That's still reasonably warm, so it won't be getting accurate weeding. Still good though. And all, obviously all the gubbins underneath here, it's air and front supported on here, which is nice. All the AC and all that in there. And these open up like this. It's an awesome mechanism for these doors. Like that. And you've got the oil filler on this side. Shut that. And obviously the air intake on this side and I believe that's part of the jacking equipment I think that's about that on on that side of all importance and obviously all the radiator matrix onto the uh, radar I'm sorry if she's a little bit grubby but I uh, haven't had a full opportunity to give her a proper rush this week but since I've uh, had the opportunity to do this for the second and that shut just like that I've got my name plate just here oh, it's not fully clear because I've got all the tags there my bad for installing it there and we've got uh, wind with mirror protectors on here. I'll show you this side because the other side is pretty much a mirror of this side. I might take you around briefly. But got mirror protectors on a uh, metal uh, steps and on both sides we've got this smaller locker which you know I'm using for my gloves and all that so we'll shut that make sure it's shut. These you do have to when you open them have to pull them as you open them. I'll show you where you do that in a second and I'll see a big top locker, nice semi-flat floor in there, sight lip here, it goes down to about that much. But it's still really good, I've got my toolbox in there and a few other bits just for a bit of scale, it's massive. As they go, and to open those, that's the lower one, this one here is for the main locker and it will just pop open like that. Obviously the wand, which is magnetic, which is nice. And I'll quickly show you the seat control since uh, you can kind of see it here. Got the uh, lumbar and all that support, raising, raising and lowering, and obviously the suspension controls. Keep forgetting that's alter it all sorts of different ways. Heated seat function, two settings, obviously it's three settings if you include the off, but off in the middle, so that'll be off. That's full whack, low, off. And it's cooled as well, which is nice. That's to uh, lower it down. Obviously to pull it out, adjust the seat pan. And you have two armrests as well with the seat. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't cover the stalks, did I? But 
as I said, you've got an automatic stalk just up there and obviously a windscreen wiper indicator stalk to the left. I assume you'll suss that one out, but I'll do a video on the cruise control, on the cruise control and the gearing and all that on another video. Obviously the exhaust manifold, we've got the side cover on this as well, which is nice, we've got the two side marker. I would say it would be good if they had one over here as well, but hey ho, it's not a complaint. You've got the air cooler for the hydraulic pump and the reservoir. This is uh, a storage box that I put some of the blue and stuff in there, which is handy to have. Obviously the exhaust box, rear air, you can use a lovely to hold the uh, hydraulic on the bottom of that deck as well, stop it loving. And a fully adjusted of all spoiler as well on top of the handle on the left that you may see. Obviously you've got full uh, coa wheels on this as well, which is nice, I do like them. Obviously not painted mud, mud flaps, but I kind of prefer that because if they're painted I'll be powered all over, you know, because a lot of these get chipped and all that. Obviously LED rear lights in this as well, the battery box and the rear. So I'm going to take you around on the more noisier side, but before we do that with a quick peek see into the engine which is in line six, 13 litres, 500 horsepower. Before I go there, it's about a 550 litre sort of fuel tank, roughly, and uh, I think it's like a 60 or 70 polo litre and blue tank. So I'll take you around there now, but bear in mind you might not hear me fully, so I thought I'd just say that now. That's also, I can't really see the display, so I'm not too sure what size I'm building. Yeah, so I've got the fuel tank on either side. I am polishing up, leaving up with all the dirt I've been through today. So we had some work for all sorts of weather today. It's actually uh, quite surprising, it's nice and sunny. But I thought I'd take the opportunity, as they would say. And it's basically a mirror of the other side, quite literally. You've got the two lights here. They are a bit wider apart on this side, I think. Let's, let's have a look at it. That's a bit wider apart. We've got the stairs there. This just pulls out like that. It would be nice if it pulled around a bit more, but it's still good. I don't have to do that that often because I've got drop the trailer all the time. It's not a biggie. And obviously got the side lockers on this side, opens up the same way, identical as the other side. And we've got the fours cameras here, which uh, kind of give you that view. It's a 500S, very impressed with her. As a, it's all fully LED as well. Anything else out here? I think I've kind of gone through it all out here. What I'll do, I'll see you in the cab next. I've got to go and grab some uh, pickies in a minute. Yeah, so we've got all, all the uh, space suppression system. So I'm absolutely in clobbered on that word. So I'll just put the conductor underneath here. Stuff you might not normally see. To take off these side panels, Got, you got these on two points of the corner. You spin this up, it unlocks it, and then I'd recommend if you take it fully off to take this clip off, and it'll come out this way, and you lift it out. So you got one there, and one here. Yeah, these lights are close together on this side for some reason. But hey ho, it's, it's not a complaint. And also, sorry, before I forget, we got a adjustable fifth wheel on this, which is always handy to have. I like adjustable fifth wheels. You know, I didn't get to use it that often. I haven't had to move it on this yet. So, 
but I've had to have move it on the daft, so no doubt I will do with this sometime. And I'll see you back in the cab. See you in a second. Hello again. <laughs> Wait. So I'm laughing because I'm filming a lot of segments all together. So I do apologise if this sounds a bit bizarre, but with obviously you've had the walk around. Hopefully you've heard all what I had to say in there. I think it's got, as I said, about 550 litre tank, 30 litre, something like that fuel tank. Also, you've got the identical lockers on both sides. We've got the cool folding open front grill area. The headlights as well, you know, and all that I showed you, obviously, as you've just seen it. My thoughts on the truck slash the summary of this video is it's just a purely amazing truck. I think, you know, I know it's been out for about three years now, roughly, but still, it's an amazing truck. It's an amazing design. Everything's practical. Everything makes sense. And certainly, as I've said before, with Dash... I love a mixture of having the touchscreen stuff, but equally having buttons. Because uh, what summed it up to me, actually, was watching another vlogger. You might know him. He's got an awesome new truck, the Edition 1. You probably know what I'm talking about here. If not, go and check out his channel. Go and give him some likes. Obviously, you probably are sub to him and all that already, but you've probably seen his video. But if you have not, go and check his, out his new Edition 1. It's actually Trucker Junko, by the way. You know, it's an amazing truck what he's got. Wow, 6.30, absolute beast. Lovely truck, I hope, but still, I hope admit, I'm no fan of Mercedes. But still, I admit, it's a nice truck. I will say that for one thing. But one thing, watching his video, that I did notice while he was driving. And by the way, this isn't criticism while he's driving, he's doing stuff. By the way, this is not a criticism of Jenko at all, but it just highlighted a very good point of the problem with having pure touchscreen stuff. Is, you know, he was, I say this is the touchscreen here, he was trying to alter the lights, I think, while he was driving. In here, you can memorise where the lights is, so I can press that. I've got a light on. Obviously, I'm slightly looking, because I'm still learning the buttons, and I'm putting my hand around my flask there, but... Still, I can put the red lights on like that and still be looking about and dim it. Yeah, making sure they're off. Because <laughs> it's daylight, so it's hard to see. Actually, I've sort the top ones on. It's... There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I like another issue, not really. But hopefully getting the grasp of what I'm trying to mean is... Having a kinetic button where you're more likely to be able to feel what it is. So on this, I can feel those, the uh, the red light ones. That one will be the... Which I'm still not, oh yeah, that's red light. And also the one at the end is my dip lights in here. And the big one at the end, if you knock it down the bottom, it lock, knocks them all on if you need to. But the primary ones that you want to use while you're driving are the first two, which will be the red light for night mode. So that's really when only really where you want to gain a bit of light in the cab if you're driving. I don't really want to put full on white light personally. But still, it's still there. You can still feel where it is. You're not having to go through menu systems and where you're, you know. You try, you try hopefully I'm, I'm over emphasising it there a little bit. What I'm trying to mean is with touch screen displays, you still have to look where you're pressing on the screen. It's not very easy to memorise through muscle memory on a touchscreen where you're going for certain options. So that's just a point of view there, just with a, a comparison of the Mercedes since I have been whipping the DAF a lot. So just another point of view, but I just think it's a perfect balance between modern technology. We've got obviously adaptive cruise control on this. We've got everything, you know, you probably need to get that and some other bits as well. You got the hill descent mode in this, which is I said just absolutely amazing. It it's one of the few trucks I've driven that actually in it any form of hill descent mode that I've used before in the past, this will actually hold you fully freighted. 
at the speed you set it to. Which is very impressive. Certainly to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of this is preference at the end of the day. I just love the cockpit in this. It's just such a nice place to be. The seat's lovely as well. Uh, I could go on all day. There's very little, I would say, is a high priority to change. There's little improvements, like the pocket up there, I prefer it a bit deeper, or if you turn that into a smaller cupboard. But really, storage in this is fantastic. You've got the forward storage, the rear storage, the underbed storage, you've got the storage in the centre console, you've got the fold-out table, you've got all the pockets as well. It, and you've got all the USBs, which, and they're all powered, Pretty much all the primary USB is all powered, even when you got the keys out the ignition, which is cool, which is nice compared to the DAF, where you had to have the keys in the ignition and turned up, I think it was one or two levels to get any power from the, any of the sockets, which was rubbish. Because then you're using more electricity that you not really want to use just to power your socket, that you try to charge your iPad up while you're watching it, or, you know, if you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not saying it's all perfect, I have the issue with the fridge, so Scania are definitely going to get on to that one and sort that out, I'll let you know in the future how that gets on. I don't perceive any issue about that, to be honest personally, from past experience with Scania, so I have no concern, they should get on top of that very quickly and get it sorted. Um, let's try to think if there's any other issues. Any main issues, um, well the body panels on the wind deflector is a little bit in by margin but that'll hopefully get adjusted while going for service as well. But that isn't a major, it's not loose or anything like that. I think it's just a pure fitment issue, personally. Um, so I can't see what else it would be, there's no damage on it or anything like that. Doesn't, Nothing to explain why it's like that, but it's only in by about a quarter of an inch or so. But it's obvious when you look down the mirror that it's there. Uh, I'm, I'm really nitpicking, to be honest. I really am like trying to find stuff that's either wrong or that really does need to be improved. Oh yeah, the bed raise mechanism, release latch, that needs to be improved as well. Because it, as you saw, it's... I don't know if you saw, but it, it is awkward to open at times. It keeps locking in on, as you look at it on the left-hand side lock. It doesn't unlock, if you know what I mean. It unlocks on the right side quite easily, but on the left, it's an absolute bugger at times. Um, but aside from that, I really, at this stage, and I will give you an update video in a year's time on that, at Forts then, can't find anything to fault. It's the best driving truck I've had, bar when I was in more of my trainers, 580 next gens, but it's pretty much the exact same thing, really. It feels the same, bar not having a V8. And, I mean, the inline engine 500 on this is amazing. It pulls like a boss. It's, it's almost to the point I'm questioning, is it a 500? Are you sure it's not bigger? <laughs> I, I'm being serious about that as well. It's... Well, these engines, it's not the first one I've come across in the industry. It's actually another Scania. It was a 450, it felt like it was a 480. Which, yeah, don't don't ask me what magic they've pulled off. I, I think I know what it is. It's obviously a bit of good engine work with a good gearbox. And just good power delivery. And that's the key. It's, not, it's all very well having a really powerful engine. If you don't have a good gearbox, what's the point of having that real big engine if you can't deliver the power where it's needed. Um, obviously being a tag, it do, as I say, it does bob about a little bit, but hey, it's a tag for you. But it is air suspender cab which sort of nullifies that quite a bit. It, it's still a tag at the end of the day. So if you're not a fan of a tag, and the Scania's tend to be the more playful of the tags, but also on the other hand, Scania tags are, tend to have the best manoeuvrability, you know, but that's because the axles are obviously tighter in, which means you can turn pretty on the, not necessarily quite on the dime, but near as 
damn it, fanatic. And you still have to be careful. You, you, you don't turn it too insane because you're still jackknife yourself. But still, the advantage of it is its manoeuvrability, which I love. I love the manoeuvrability. And you learn to live with a tag. It's same when you first move on to a tag. You, you do think, oh, I'm not sure about this. I much prefer a mid lift or, you know, something of that nature. And some drivers who drive tags drive the tag down, which sort of defeats the point of having the tag, in my view. And you're adding more unnecessary wear on to uh, the tag as well. But you learn to live with it. You, you, it's like anything. It's, you learn its behaviours, how it handles certain roads. It does track a little bit because of it being so manoeuvrable and being a tag. You do feel the ruts a bit more and it can drive you a little bit. But aside from that, the steering on this is amazing as well. It steers on a dime. It steers straight as well. It's, it's not one of these trucks that your steering wheels are at an odd angle. If you're doing that, you're turning left. You know, if you'd like that, going forward. So daft, you drive a look a bit like that down the road at times. But with this, it's just straightforward if you're going straight down the road. So without praising the truck over and over again, I think I've probably covered the whole spectrum. And at the end of the day, my general summary of this is I'm blown away with this truck. It is a privilege to drive. It's that's a, such a nice thing. It's lovely, and if any of you ever get the honour to drive all these, it, it won't disappoint. I mean, bar specking, of course. I mean, it's depend who you drive for, how they spec it out. I'm lucky enough to drive with a Hulia who specs them out. You know, they pretty much fit all. <laughs> bar the odd thing, of course. So we don't have the night cooler system, which I'm looking at probably getting personally. But I don't mind that, to be honest. I'm still on the debate side of that one. I suppose that brings me also maybe, am I planning to do anything? Hints, maybe fitting a night cooler. I'm not too sure if I'm going to fit any light bars or anything onto her yet. I'm going to leave it a couple of months, price them up and just see if it's worthwhile or not. Because the lights on this are amazing anyway, so I, that's another reason why I'm not really considering a light bar. I might consider maybe a, a light trim bar or something like that. Maybe some extra air horns or something, maybe, but I'm not too sure. It's not urgent. I'm very happy with it, to be honest. And it, I said the horn on this is good as well. It's an air horn as well, so it's it's a good horn. <laughs> That's all I can say. It does the job of a horn. And I mean, personally, really, it's very little I want to really add to her. There's going to be little bits. I want to get my invert installed into her as well, so I can edit the videos are a bit better, that's another priority thing I'm looking at redoing my plug or getting actually properly installed into the truck, which would actually be nice as well. Um, yeah, so I think I've covered everything. Uh, please feel free to go and check out my Facebook and Instagram, so I will put pictures up of her there. I will hopefully attach a few other pictures from this week on and from prior weeks from of the truck onto this video as well, maybe. Um, I'll see how I do this video. And with all that said, I would say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. You know, over 160 subscribers now. You know, thank you very much. It is seriously very much appreciated. And uh, yet again, if you have any questions, comments, obviously keep it sensible, comment down below. And I will look forward to reading it. And hopefully if, if it needs replying to, replying to it. And yet again, a massive thank you to everybody. And uh, as I said, absolutely blown away with this truck. It's hands down the best truck I've had to drive. In terms of my truck to drive. I've ever had full stop. You know... But I'll never forget opportunity to drive something else, you know, along the line a bit, obviously on the engine side, but besides from that, I'm very happy. I'm a happy trucker. Very content, in other words. Um, and that's about it. And I'll see you 
and hopefully next week in either a vlog or some other video I haven't planned out next week yet so we'll see where we go from there I will see you in the next one over and out